this is the Gaming Rev, and today we are looking at Common Hood, a game of homeless survival. A reminder that this game is in beta at the, testing at the moment, and so things may change from the video as you see it now. Okay guys, so this is a long one and I apologise, um, but this is the first video showcasing the sandbox features of uh, Common Hood. Uh, the beta has switched us over to the sandbox mode, which I mentioned uh, in the last video. Now, in this mode, obviously you have unlimited resources, unlimited equipment, and it's primarily there so you can feel free to design and to work on blueprints for yourself that you possibly wouldn't have the time or the uh, inclination to do in the story mode. Um, it gives you the full set of machinery which I've laid out uh, here on this side to build much bigger blueprints uh, and more complicated ones um, so that when you come to do this in game you can have the blueprints already made in story mode um, and then task your workers with perhaps building up the larger blueprints whilst you build the sectional structures or have one person building the uh, the blueprint while another person builds floor or wall structures and so on. The key part of this is the internet console which is here. Uh, you log into it using whatever details you want um, and that allows you to store your own blueprints and download other people's blueprints as well. So I'm going to take this garden planter because I actually quite like the look of it. Um, it's a nice little idea um, and if nothing else it'll make me setting up a garden easier when I go back to playing story mode uh, when the beta switches back. So we're going to give the garden planter a bit of a chance. Uh, so that's downloaded now. So obviously we come out of the internet connection, we go into our own backpack into the blueprints menu and there is the planter that we downloaded. Now it's quite a size, I'm going to just pop over here a second uh, to show you how large it is. So there we are. It, you are looking at a decent sized piece of equipment. Um, now I'm not going to try and build that myself. The other thing that the sandbox mode has is robots. Uh, now you can build them eventually in story mode as well, but it has robot arms. So, I mean, I've actually seen these working in obviously car factories and places like that, doing the construction, and effectively it's the same thing. You can set these guys up, you click on the back of them, you load your blueprint that you want into it, it tells you what materials it needs, just the same as the workbenches and so on do. You load a load of materials in, and you press start. Now, the one downside to this is that it will build one thing at a time. So, let's say for sake of argument you wanted to build floor sections it will build one floor section and stop. So you couldn't set it to build floor sections, clear off to the other end of the factory and come back when it's built 20. You need to keep an eye on the robot arms because you need to pick up the item and restart it again every single time. So I'm going to chuck some resources in here a second. I needed 288 soil. Now as I say, the resources do regenerate but, and it's a big but, they regenerate in set quantities. So for instance, the soil regenerates in batches of 50. So what you have to do is what I'm going to do now, click on the display, take the soil, close it, reopen it, take the soil, close it, and so on. Um, Whilst I could understand doing that maybe if this wasn't a sandbox build what the heck you like mode. Um, 
I really don't understand why everything else is thousands of them. And yet soil, which is sort of quite a heavy use resource, is 50. I can understand it for things like the soldering irons and stuff like that. But, you know, yeah, I'm not, I'm not keen on the, the quantities. But, you know, we'll, we'll live with it. We'll get on with it. And now the robot arm starts loading all the bits and pieces into the plan that's needed. And it will start building it with me just leaving it to get on with it. So I'm going to go and get some more bits and pieces now. Because I want to set up um, a couple of production lines. One will be doing... Uh, floor sections. One will be doing um, solid walls. The walls in story mode you might have noticed when I put one up um, has a smooth side on one side and obviously just blank on the other. It's left empty panelling. Uh, now I'm not keen on that so I'm going to design a blueprint to do the um, the wall with both sides covered. It's nice and simple. So I'm going to do the blueprints for both of these. Um, although there is obviously a blueprint for the floor section, I'm going to design my own just because it's easier that way. Um, now there are, if I go on to, I don't know, there are blueprints for floor sections on the uh, the internet but it's going to be as fast to be honest to design it myself and I can show you then the design process as well so what we're going to do obviously we're going to lay out first of all the basic resources we need so the first thing is going to be a 10 foot length of 4x4 four four. now because we're making it square the next length is going to be 9 and 2 thirds so 9.67 feet same again this side 9.67 feet and then 9.33 feet. There we are. <clears throat> We're going to put a piece of 4 before in the corner of each section. There we are. And then we're going to get rid of that and we're going to put the uh, the floor panels down or the panelling down to make the floor section. And that's the same sort of design that was the floor panel in the original. Now to make a blueprint you press the G key and you left click on each individual component and as you click on each component it goes see through to show that it's been clicked so you click on every single piece and once that's done there we are, you press enter you name it whatever you want and then you save it so this is just going to be um, I think floor tile should we say there we are, floor tile, save. And that's the blueprint created. And that will be stored in my blueprints, but also on the internet, on the computer. So there we are, on my blueprints, there's the floor tile. So we're going to load that blueprint now into this robot. There we are. We're going to chuck a thousand 4x4s and a thousand floor tiles in. A thousand uh, panel, wood panels in. One inch panels. There we are. And start. And that will start building them now. Now the next thing I want to do is, I say, do the design for the wall panel. And it's going to pretty much be exactly the same... as the oops a bit too far I've stuffed this up I think let's have a look I think I've stuffed it up oh no I got it right there's always a first time right so <laughs> it's going to be the same as the floor panel or the floor tile so it's 10 foot by nine and two thirds by nine and two thirds by nine and a third for the woodwork. We're going to put the corner pieces in, and then we're just going to take the one-inch panels all the way across as we would for the floor. Go.
go around the other side and do exactly the same thing. And what that will mean is rather than having to have one side of the wall being sort of a bit more unsightly, it means that it's a sealed wall unit. Um, now I will be designing two different types of wall unit. This one um, will do for where there's only one side or opposite sides of the same tile with a section of wall on. The other one will be slightly shorter simply because it's going to be the corner section where they intersect. So rather than it being uh, 10 foot long, it will only be 9 and 2 thirds feet long. Um, you'll see more when I start building them together later. So we're going to get the uh, blueprint out. And exactly the same again, we're going to whack it into the back of the uh, the robot arm. We're going to put the resources in and we're going to tell it to get building. Now, uh, let's go and pick this floor tile up and start the robot arm again. Now, as I said, um, the one thing I will say the robot arms do not build these items as fast as you can. You can build them a lot faster than the robots do. However, what's going on here? Okay. That's not good, right? Let's go and have a look at the back of the robot a second, I think. It looks as though the soil isn't loading for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, so that's showing that progress there, and those are both loaded. So it's not disappearing when it's using. Sorry, I just want to check this out a minute. Um, yeah, okay. So what I've noticed is, right, the. Robot arm that's building the farm doesn't have any soil in there, even though I put 300 soil in. So I need to go and uh, have a look at that and sort that out. Come on. There we go. Right, so yeah, the soil's missing, and so is the 4x4 wood. Okay, we've got a thousand that we can whack that in. Let's go and get some more soil. Now, this is something that I have noticed with other things. Um, you set things up to sort of auto-build, and all of a sudden the stuff disappears. Um, no reason, no rhyme to it. It's just not there anymore. The first time it happened to me uh, the other day, I must admit, I thought it was me messing up. But having been able to go back and just have a quick look on the video, I've realised it's not me. Uh, <laughs> because I've got video evidence of putting soil in, so it is that it disappeared from somewhere, and I don't know why. Um, but that's a good bug report that I can put into the uh, developers. So, hey, I'm actually earning my weight as a beta tester. So there we are, the soil's in, and now it's working. Okay. So there's another floor tile done. So yeah, anyway, sorry. What I was saying before that, the robot arms don't build as fast as you can, but what it does mean is you could have three or four robot arms building the pieces you want, and in multiple numbers, the robot arms are faster than you because they could perhaps craft four or five or six floor panels, let's say, in the time it would take you to build two. Okay, so we've skipped ahead about 20 minutes now, um, simply because obviously I'd wasted so much time while it hadn't got any soil in it. And you can see um, just how well it's doing. Now this is what I'm building so far. Um, this is my or going to be my blueprint for a house back in story mode um, and what you've got is two 10 foot panels 
at the far end, standing up as walls. You've got a 10 foot panel on the left hand side, but the other panel is the 9 and 2 thirds foot because it doesn't need to go the full length of the panel. Um, and my plan is to build effectively um, a five floor section wide by four or maybe five floor section length building that will have a couple of two by two rooms as bedrooms and then a central area that will be for a research station, maybe a tables or chairs, a communal living area basically. Um, the idea being that rather than having to set up different sections of these things, I can set it so that myself or um, somebody, one of the people in the community can be building uh, floor sections and wall sections then I can go and collect those from the community storage and I can then go and just build with the pre-built sections the properties that I want. Uh, so that's the, the, the basic plan. Uh, I'm not going to get it finished today as I say we're nearing 16-17 minutes at the moment so I don't want to be too much longer. I want to get the garden finished and as I say I would guess it's taken the robot after I put the soil in probably about 20 minutes to build this garden. You could probably do it faster but do you really want to? I mean you know there's a lot of pieces there there's a lot of components surely it's easier just to let the robot do its thing um, and again whilst that robot is building that the next one is building floor sections the next one is building wall sections and I could have other robots building bits and pieces and again once you get the oh there we are we're built so let's pick that up and take it over the other side um, once you get to the point in the game where you can build excuse me again you can build the uh, the robot arms in the factory in story mode that level of automation makes it a lot easier then to build bigger structures um, and more sophisticated structures there we are let's grab this floor piece so in the next video I'm going to look at um, completing the design for the house to get that done and possibly seeing if I can then work around how we're going to do uh, different designs or improve on the design, perhaps put extra floors on and things like that. But I think that's going to be it for this first video. Um, on the sandbox. I think I've covered quite enough stuff. So I'm going to leave it here for now. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Please leave comments if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the next Common Hood video. Like and subscribe and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.